All right, Josh. You said we needed to meet. What, what's up? I've been giving it a lot of thought. The name of the show we do together. Yeah, Brothers Not Lovers, what? I feel it's not us. We need to change the name. What, why would we change the name? We've established it. It's a little goofy, but to the point, Brothers Not Lovers. I think we should call ourselves Julia Roberts. No, no, no. We're not calling ourselves Julia Roberts. She might like it. No, no, and in fact, with all your drunken, perverted rambling about showgirls, I can pretty much guarantee a big, fat lawsuit. Sorry, Josh, but we are not calling ourselves Julia Roberts. How about Sandra Bullock? Do you like fun and adventure? Then sit back and enjoy the Brothers Not Lovers as they discuss all things movies. What's overrated or underrated? What makes you go really? Or how dare you? Or even just simply how funny this movie can be. You have the insightful, intuitive, Davey, who is awesome. And you have the film bestie, Josh. He's there. Hi, Davey. I'm awesome. This is Josh, the film bestie. And... Why do you... Why do oh. you have soup? Yeah, you know... I was really grateful you guys invited me over for dinner, but I figured if I didn't like it, you know, I'd have to... Ah, 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 ah. My feast. And this is... How dare you? What I should have said just two seconds ago. When we take movies that were incessantly bashed or, or didn't live up to their full potential and we look at you and say, How dare you? And on this particular episode of How Dare You... Is a very special one to me. To all the great 80s B booby movies that have been right through the coals. Right, Davy? I told you in that Zoom meeting, we are not doing that. You didn't tell me because I don't know what Zoom is! No, this edition is all animated movies. Animated movies that should have done better. But you guys didn't give them a chance. To kick it off, one that, yes, I'll admit, was a little environmentally preachy, but you know what? It had Tim Curry, it had Robin Williams, it had Christian Slater, and back when he was still dreamy. And yet, it very quickly faded into obscurity. Of course, now it's making a resurgence thanks to hipsters. Damn hipsters. And that movie is Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest. How could you not make this the legendary movie it was supposed to be? It had Robin Williams rapping as a bat. Oh, I remember this one. That's it? Christian Slater was still dreaming when this came out. Did you know that? I even had an action figure. It was like one of those big G.I. Joes. My mom played with it all the time. That thing never had a shirt on it. Are you sure? I'm positive. Only fools are positive. Are you sure? I'm positive. I fell for it! I should have known! A movie about a human who gets shrunk down to fairy size. The fairies who protect the rainforest. I told you the water was cold! But no, a human working with a logging company chopping down the rainforest, gets shrunk down to the size of a fairy. The fairies who protect the rainforest, apparently not that well. And I've been cutting trees down for years, just waiting for the fairies to come confront me. They never did. I'd stop cutting them down if you'd ask me to. The problem is, is you're the reason we had to move out of that neighborhood. But this guy who didn't care anything about the environment suddenly starts to care. But now, his logging company being controlled by a big... Greasy smoke monster played by Tim Curry. Tim, the only man who can make the name Tim manly. You know I have a son named Tim. I stand by what I said. And like I said, Robin Williams in it, playing a fruit bat that was experimented on, and he, fairies, and a human, all trying to stop Frank Furter from destroying the rainforest. You know, I'm surprised you didn't name the hottest character of all. The voice 
of the main girl in that was that hot chick from Mario Brothers. This movie taught us the importance of the rainforest. And even though we learned and did nothing about it, I still say, how dare you? How dare you? We gotta finish cutting them off. Cut them all down and we'll stop monsters, smoke monsters, from taking over the world. The rainforests are making it happen. Right? Yeah! You need to watch the movie again. What movie? And for our next, How Dare You. This great remake of an animated classic starring Russell Brand as a rich miser. DuckTales. Treasure of something and something. Island. I think DuckTales and Treasure was the only thing you got right in that statement. Helen Mirren. Mm. Launchpad. Mm. Helen Mirren. What? Are you thinking about Arthur? No, I'm not thinking about Arthur. <laughs> Duh. Thinking about the one with that duck that swims in all the money. Yeah, that's DuckTales, but the movie you're describing, the remake with Russell Brand and Helen Mirren, that's Arthur. She didn't get naked in that. I'm thinking about her naked. She didn't. Nobody got naked in DuckTales! You sure? Because I'm pretty sure Launchpad, you know what? No, I look at no, too much no, stuff online. You're, you're done. You're yeah. done. But DuckTales Treasure of the Lost Lamp. A movie that is now very difficult to find on DVD because it did so poorly. What the heck is wrong with you guys? Seriously, it's du like one of the best. It was one of the best cartoons growing up. DuckTales. You'd watch it in a little block with Rescue Rangers and Darkwing Duck. Uh, I remember when Mom took us to the theater to see that. They took one of the greatest TV shows, made a movie out of it. None of you watched it, the few that did. You didn't say nice things about it. So it just kind of faded away. That means you didn't watch it for real. You just pretended to. Probably, because if you watched this for real, you'd have been entertained. You'd have been you laughing. All, you are all so obsessed with, with those My Little Pony. My Little Pony suck. This movie is so great that back in the dying days of me having a VCR, which was not terribly long ago, had a copy of this showed it to my kids, and even they loved it. Even though, at that point, they'd never even seen DuckTales. Wow, your kids actually watched something on a VCR? Yeah, years ago. That's amazing! Yeah, so to all the people that knock VCRs, how dare you? That's not what we're how daring. Oh, right. We're how daring that you did not appreciate DuckTales' Treasure of the Lost Lamp, but there is still time. If you feel guilty, First of all, good. Second, get out there, find this movie, demand it, and let it become a thing that they put on DVD compilations with the seasons of DuckTales. The good DuckTales, not the newer one. That one sucks. You can still change. It's only once a year. Open your heart and give to mankind. Mankind should be our business. That went in a direction I didn't expect. If you're not going to seek out DuckTales Treasure of the Lost Lamp. How dare you. I do not drink to you. I brought a third one. Could argue why are we how daring it because it did make money in its initial run. And in recent years it has come back. It's gotten popular again. Heck, I'm even hearing some of the songs occasionally at the grocery stores. But, for a long time, Everybody had forgotten that there was ever a movie called a Goofy movie. How dare you. Oh, uh, is that the one where he takes his kid on a trip across the country to keep him out of jail because the principal by Wallace Shawn was a dick? Holy crap, you got one right! And they saved Buttercup! One of the other great Disney shows that we used to like to watch back when Disney was still worth watching, was a goof troop. And now, Max is not all the way grown up, but he's in middle school now. Now being voiced by Jason Marsden to impress 
a girl, Roxanne, or as my middle used to call her, Rox Baby, he decides to put on a little lip sync concert where he pretends to be the biggest rock star on their planet, Powerline. Which, you know, we related to because we were like, whoa, Powerline, we grew up under those. And because of this, yeah, of course, the principal gets all upset because how dare he interrupt him while he was talking about science slumber parties. Which, don't get me wrong, always down for a good science slumber party. But still, exaggerates the point, tells his dad that he's going to end up a gang member. So his dad, trying to bond with him, takes him on a trip. And his son detours that trip all the way to Los Angeles to go to a Powerline concert. And along the way, they have the cheesiest looking pizza I have ever seen. And I wish they could do in real life. Here's what I've got to ask. What? Mickey's a mouse, Donald's a duck, Pluto's a dog. What's Goofy? Goofy's a dog. Who had a dog for a pet? That's messed up. It's a great movie. It's got great songs. And you know what? I watched this movie so much when it came out that I remember, again, years later, I've now got two out of my three kids. I find a copy of a Goofy movie on DVD. I buy it. And I still knew all the songs. I knew how to stand out above the crowd. Nobody else but you. Put it in, because I needed a break from modern living. I long to shed my weary load. At the Possum Park? If we looked into each other's eyes, we'd see that we needed a Goofy movie. <sighs> but seriously, it had great songs. It was a great story. It was funny. But yet, for some reason, again, like I said, for years, I would talk about this and people would go... They had a movie about Goofy? You sickos. And yet you watch Twilight, you nasty. Yeah. I will say that Max, Roxanne, better love story than Twilight. Dude, Freddy Krueger and his victims are a better love story. Fair enough. I will say this. I'm glad that people did catch on. Go, hey, yeah, that's right. There was a Goofy movie. Let's remind people about that. And I'm glad that you also left out that there was an extremely Goofy movie because that wasn't as good. But, for those of you who allowed it to fall into obscurity for almost 20 years, how dare you? How dare. For our next, how dare you, the makers of manscaping. I don't need to shave that. Right? No. For our last, how dare you. It's a cartoon. I know, crazy first cartoon of the evening. Another one that we saw in theaters, instantly loved, and years later I found out it did very poorly in theaters because apparently if Michael Keaton or Christian Bale wasn't playing Batman, then none of you were interested, like when we got Batman Mask of the Phantasm. But yes, this was a great story that they did animated based on my absolute favorite cartoon growing up, Batman the Animated Series. It gave us... <laughs> it gave us Harley Quinn <laughs> and Mark Hamill as the Joker. <laughs> Don't forget the late, great Kevin Conroy as Batman. It was a great story. Locked you right in. Actually had a twist, because you didn't know that the Joker was going to be involved in it until the end. You didn't know that it was going to turn out to be his ex-girlfriend that was going to be the Phantasm. Especially because this was the 90s and... Let's face it, we were a little too sexist to believe that the killer could be a girl. I still don't believe it. it but was. it had a great cast. It really did. And it was a great story. And it was thanks to this movie that we started getting other animated movies, although they didn't go into theaters. Movies like Under the Red Hood, Justice League Doom, Flashpoint Paradox. These wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Batman Mask of the Phantasm. But again, all of you, you smug a-holes with your buckets of chicken going like, I'm going to see something better than a cartoon. Nom, 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 nom. And now KFC tastes horrible. But that has nothing to do with this. Dana Delaney did the voice in that. She is literally ageless. Batman the Animated Series was a great Batman. In the midst of Joel Schumacher ruining Batman for us, at least there was a cartoon that still let Batman have his balls. This movie, to me, is canon to the Tim Burton ones. I don't know if it's canon, but... To me, it is. More canon than 
Forever or Batman and Robin. I hate you, Schumacher. I hate what you did to Jim Carrey. I hate that you were obsessed with plastic nipples. I'm sorry, okay? I just think they're fun. Not you, him. <laughs> oh, okay. But you two. But more than I hate the plastic nipples, I hate the fact that Batman Mask of the Phantasm is not remembered as the legendary movie that it should have been. And for that I say, how dare you? How dare you? So there you have it. Burn Gully, the last rainforest. For the trees, how dare you? DuckTales, Treasure of the Lost Lamp. For the ducks, how dare you? A goofy movie. How goofy and dare you? Hmm. Hope you get a possum in your pants. And those of you who didn't respect Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Or bats. How dare you. Justice. Justice. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of How Dare You. And if you did, make sure to hit like. Hit subscribe. Hit the little bell so you get notifications for when we post the videos. And leave a comment that I can respond to on my ex-comment corner. Tell us some more how many movies you th feel we should have stood up for. Tell us where you rank some of these movies. This is going on the internet? Is this OnlyFans? Love you guys.